Hi, this lecture is an introduction on number fields. It's a part of the Isogeny-based Cryptography Summer School of Bristol 2021. I put some lecture notes uh, available through a link in the comment section of this video. So, what is the definition of a number field? It is a, it so it is an extension, a finite extension of the field of the rationals. What that means is that it can be written down as the quotient of q of x by an irreducible polynomial of degree n. What it looks like is the field of rational to which, I mean the smallest field to which we adjoin one of the roots, uh, one of the roots alpha that satisfies so p so t of alpha equals zero. Okay, so those fields can be so they all contained in C as show as shown in the drawing and they can be embedded in C in n different ways where n is the degree of the polynomial so how this is made possible is by written writing down t of x as it factors over C as a product uh, from i equals 1 to n of x minus alpha i and we can map uh, here we map our value alpha to one of the complex roots alpha i now the there are um, some of those embeddings actually have the property that they are uh, they are included in the reals and we call that a real embedding which means that on top of being a uh, such an embedding, it's all stuck in the real numbers. And there is going to be where we define uh, that number R1, R1 real embeddings, and R2 pairs of complex embeddings. So these, those embeddings where um, the, the field, the copy of the fields that we're uh, describing uh, cannot be, um, it can is not stuck in R, so we say well that it's complex, and then what we have is that n quite naturally is R one plus two times R two. So the signature is the value, uh, the pair R one R two. Um, so what it means is you have this uh, notion of uh, how the elements behave in your field arithmetically, and then a copy of that. Uh, sort of description of your field, you can have n copies of that um, uh, in in C, okay, via those uh, those embeddings. So let's see on an example uh, what it looks like. Our uh, simplest uh, 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 number fields are uh, the quadratic ones. So let's assume d is a square free integer. Then we'll have uh, t equals x squared minus d uh, is an irreducible polynomial and we can it defines uh, a number field k which is equal to square root of d where square root of d is is an element whose square equals d and so the the embeddings here are plus or minus square root d which correspond to the two uh, the two uh, 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 the two roots of your of your of your field and it turns out they're real so here we have r1 equals 2 and r2 equals 0 now there is their counterpart uh, the imaginary quadratic fields they're defined by um, a, an, uh, an equation of the form x squared plus d and in this case we're talking about the field that's defined by the square root of minus d which uh, which is complex and so the two embeddings are given plus or minus map alpha to plus or minus i or square root of d. So in this case, the signature is r1 equals 0 because neither of these embeddings is uh, restricted to r. And then, but they're both a pair of, of conjugate complex embeddings, so r2 equals 1. So less relevant to isogenies. But still very important in number theory are the uh, psychotomic extensions. So I'll just state here for the record, uh, a very important category of fields is given by adjoining Q, uh, adjoining a, an, a primitive nth root of unity to, to Q, okay? And that is a psychotomic field. The corresponding polynomial 
that defines this field is the nth cyclotomic polynomial, where here you have the power as a product of x minus the powers, uh, the powers of, of uh, this root that correspond to a k that is co-prime with n. Okay, and all the embeddings are given by rotating those uh, roots, so mapping the primitive nth root of unity to uh, all the other primitive nth root of unity that, that are obtained by uh, basically taking a power of, of this element. Okay, so first uh, properties uh, that we look that we look at and we'll need uh, when we study uh, our classical algorithms is norm and trace so first we start in this lecture to only talk about the norm and trace of elements um, so and uh, the given all the uh, complex embeddings we can define the norm as the product of all these embeddings and the trace as the sum so the very dual definition norm and trace and naturally, we have that the trace is additive, so the trace of alpha plus beta is the sum of the traces, while the norm is multiplicative. Now, one thing that is uh, really important too is that um, if you do not have the, uh, all the alpha i's, but you want a very elementary way to calculate the norm, you can do it by expressing your element alpha uh, as, a, as a linear combination of the powers of theta, Okay, so expressing it as a polynomial in theta with coefficients in the rational and then taking the resultant between this polynomial and the polynomial that defines the field. Okay, so uh, basically uh, uh, one um, um, a determinant computation can give you the norm. Okay, so there's a very elementary way to calculate that. Now, let's calculate that on an example. We take again a very simple example of uh, real quadratic fields and here what we have is sigma one, sigma 1 of alpha is simply the identity so a plus b square root d and then sigma 2 of alpha will be a minus b square root d and then the norm of alpha is the product of those two values sigma 1 alpha sigma 2 alpha and that is a plus b square root d. So I'm not doing it with the resultant technique because this is very easy here. So I may as well uh, do it just by multiplicating the element with its conjugate and I get a minus b square d. So that's my norm. Now, another very important notion is the orders, okay? So an order is a lattice inside of my of my field that happens to be a ring and have that has dimension n. So an order is always uh, defined, uh, I mean, uh, by a uh, n different uh, linearly independent elements in k. So it's always a basis of k. Okay, and and yeah, and it's also a ring. Now we're gonna have um, we're, we're gonna have to talk about ideals and orders so the ring structure of an order of course is really important because in subsequent lectures we'll be talking about ideals and then of course the class group is the ideal class group so the notion of uh, so the fact that we have a ring to begin with is of course essential to um, uh, to all the work that we'll be doing in the sort of subsequent lectures now one those orders they're partially in, include they're partially ordered by inclusion and particularly one of them st stands on top, there's a maximal order, okay? And the maximal order is also called the ring of integers. And the ring of integers generalizes the notions of integers. So for example, if Z is the ring of integers of the trivial number field Q, then uh, that maximal order here is the ring of integers, what plays the, roles of, the role of integers in a number field of the form Q of alpha. Now, um, z of alpha is not always the maximal order. It happens, but it may not. So z of alpha is going to be inside of the maximal order, and it may or may not be equal. So as an example, we give the ring of integers of a psychotomic field, okay? And this, this is an order, and it can be shown to be maximal, z of zeta n, which is just the sum of all the a, k, 
where ak is just the powers of um, uh, of, uh, of zeta n. Okay, so um, so really this notion of, of maximum order is really important, and they're going to be in fact so uh, defining the size of our inputs. Okay, so the ring with which we work in our algorithms that work with the class group is in fact a, an important notion of the of the input itself and so uh, tied to this notion is a notion of discriminant so what is a discriminant it's uh, the square of the determinant of uh, the embeddings of, uh, of, a, of a basis and um, this is also so the square of the volume of the fundamental domain. So here I'm just representing a volume of, uh, of a fundamental domain. And so that's why, uh, loosely speaking, it quantifies the size of our, um, uh, of our order. Okay? That we can be given by uh, very small vectors, but still the volume of its fundamental domain is fixed. Okay? So here, as an example, I'm giving you the formula for the discriminants of the order of, of, a, of a psychotomic field, so Z of zeta n. Okay, so some of the time, we know exactly, it's, it's very easy, as fact. as a matter of fact, always easy to calculate, and, and is actually given, given to us by determinants. Okay? But really, what we'll see in all the class group algorithms is that we give complexities with respect to log of the discriminant, okay? So log of the discriminant, the bit size of the discriminant really is what quantifies uh, the hardness of the algorithms that we will be introducing in the series of lectures. And so something that is a polynomial in that log of delta, the discriminant, is going to be considered a poly, poly time algorithm, while something that is polynomial in delta, I mean, in the discriminant, so it will be an exponential in the log of delta. So then that will be uh, an exponential algorithm, right? So, so this is really how we're going to view uh, the input side. That's why that notion of discriminant is so important in that context. So this is it. We've seen only a very brief introduction on number fields. And in the subsequent lectures, we'll build on that to reach uh, the notion of class group. And then the, uh, we'll study the algorithmic aspects of the class group, especially those that are in connection with isogeny-based cryptography. Thank you very much for your attention.